Hello everyone and welcome to Whiskey Wars and today we have an Ardbeg War on the channel and I've just realised I've never reviewed Ardbeg on the channel before so as soon as I realised that, that had to change and so here is an Ardbeg review today now these are two uh, sherry, uh, sherry influenced uh, islas from Ardbeg we have the Ardbeg Anoa which is bottled at 46% and the Ubedal which is a bit of a hype beast. Everyone loves it. Um, I think it's, I mean, it's a lot of whiskey YouTubers' favourite whiskey, certainly favourite Isla. So um, this has been top of the uh, shortlist for quite some time. And it is bottled at 54.2%. Now, both of these bottles are non-chill filtered and natural colour. Okay, let's get started. We'll start off with the Anoa. There is a smell with Ardbeg like there is with Lafroy, which is, if, if you smell any Ardbeg, you know it's an Ardbeg. It's the same with Lafroy. Um, and it's always a, it's always a nice moment when you haven't had an Ardbeg or a Lafroy in a long time. And then you smell it again, you're like, oh yeah, that, that's it. Just incredibly full of peat. Um, but not it's not overpowering, it's um it's it's a really strange one it, it our begs. I find it quite common with our beg where there's so much peat, it kills almost everything, but it doesn't blow your head off and it's more nuanced and subtle which is quite weird to say but if you smell it you'll know what i mean it comes through this pungent rotting vegetation sweet almost vegetal smell um i would also say the anoa comes across a little bit more like treacle on bonfire night and sticky toffee pudding sticky toffee pudding is actually a really good description, I think, for the nose of the Anoa. With just heaps of tobacco, um, old cigarette smell that's left on your clothes. Um, definitely smells like that. Full of peat, earthy. But again, this, this sweetness that is really nice, and it comes from the sherry casks. In fact, I pers it's my personal opinion, but... I prefer Ardbeg's sherry, whereas with Lafroy, I think I'm the other way around. Amazing. Let's go to the Ugadar, which it is 8% stronger. And interesting. The Ugadar for me is more sherry than the Anoa, whereas the Anoa turns it more into a treacle and sticky toffee pudding. I would say the Ugadal, you can almost pick out red fruit in there. Maybe a little bit more wood, a little bit more oak. Still hugely peated, which is more peated? For me, there's more on the nose coming from the Anoa. Controversial. More of a mossy, soily, and salty than the Anoa. Okay, now I'm confused because now the Anoa smells sweeter. <laughs> yes. Okay. I think I'm now acclimatised to the peat on both of them. And now I've pushed through that peat, I feel like the Anoa is sweeter and lighter than the Ugadar. I think there's more tobacco in the Ugadal. 
and that anoa is almost giving off a lime or a baked apple. And that Uber doll is just saying, no, we're, we're just taking you to the, the pits of hell and we're keeping you there. Just straight up tobacco and peat. With just a touch of sherry. Okay, let's start the tasting. Beautiful. Salty and sweet. Amazing combination. Good balance between the two. Yeah, an amazing balance. I was going to say it's more sweet, but no, it's still really salty as well. Definitely that treacle, burnt caramel, sticky toffee pudding coming through. With a load of peat and tobacco and sea salt and seaweed. A really strong seaweed note on there. It's really nice. It's really nice. Okay, Uga doll time. The Ugadol is saltier for me. It's definitely the saltier of the two. And I'm getting a stronger seaweed note as well. Definitely that marine aspect, kelp. Grassy, really grassy, which uh, really surprised me, but it's, it's really grassy. Almost a touch of menthol as well. So what I'm thinking is, because the Anoa, its sherry influences PX, Pedro Jimenez, that tends to be sweeter than Oloroso, which I would imagine is the sherry cask in the Ugador. And that's why the Anoa is coming across more sweet on the taste. And that Oloroso cask isn't dominating the whiskey. I can really feel the, the PX in the Anoa. And I would actually say this one comes down to you as to which one you would prefer. Um, if your favourite Ardbeg is Ardbeg 10, I think you're going to prefer the Ugadol. For me, actually, I prefer the Anoa, the Wee Beastie and the Ugadol to the Tenure. So for me, I actually prefer the Anoa. Um, I like this balance of sweetness with intense peat and saltiness. And I feel like with the 10, because it's not, it doesn't have any sherry influence, but also the Ugadal, the sherry presence isn't enough to complete that balance for me. And so for me, the, the Anoa is the better of the two, but I also know that for most people, the Ugadol is their favourite Arbeg or the Tenier. So I think most people don't like their Arbeg sherried. I know this is sherried, but it doesn't dominate the whiskey. Um, and so for that reason, I would say you're probably going to prefer the Ugadol because most people seem to. But if you're like me and you prefer it, uh, a little bit more sherry notes, I think you, you'd be really surprised with the Inoa. You know, the Anoa for 46, 46.6%. Um, this whiskey is around £40 in the UK. I think it's amazing value for money. Um, on offer, you can get it for around 36 So, incredible. The Ugadal, I, I got it in duty-free, but you, normally you're paying £57 for this whiskey. 
So 37 pounds, 57 pounds. For me, I know which whiskey I'm buying. Um, but let me know in the comments if you agree with me or disagree with me. I think there'll be um, a lot disagreeing. I think it's quite a controversial view. But I'd also be intrigued if one or two of you agree with me um, on that. And if you like your Arbeg's a little bit more sherried. So thanks for watching, everyone. If you like the video, please like the video and don't forget to subscribe to the channel. And also quickly, uh, I am filming this on a new camera setting. Um, so I, I don't know yet what's blurry and what's in shot and in, in focus. So um, if you prefer this style of video, um, please let me know in the comments because I might go back to the old style, uh, depending on what people think of it. So thanks for watching. Hope you enjoy the review. Hope it helps. And um, I'll see you for the next Whiskey Walk. Okay, so really quickly, I'm just um, adding this in to the middle of the review, probably. Um, you might have heard me start out by saying, on the smell anyway, that the Ubedal was sweeter. And then I got onto the taste and I said, actually, no, the Anoa is sweeter. I would actually agree with that. I would. But I'm, I perhaps didn't explain well enough that you can taste uh, the sherry notes in the Ugadol. I'm just drinking it now to finish off the dram off camera and I'm like damn I really should have mentioned that more. Um, it's present, it's there. Um, if you had this next to the Tenye you'd be going wow this is really sherry but next to the Inoa and that's the issue when you're comparing. You can really see which is the sweetest and which isn't. But the one that isn't as sweet, because you're not comparing it to something that isn't sherry at all, um, you can not accurately represent that it is actually still quite sweet. Um, I still would agree with everything else that I said, but that's something I just want to point out. Um, less sweet than the Anoa, like I said in the review. But still, there is sweetness there. And it's instead of a treacle, bomb for, um, burnt caramel, sticky toffee pudding, like I said, the Anoa was. This is more of a red fruit. No, but it's not as strong as the sweetness of the Anoa. Okay, back to the review.